clear up some confusion before this review begins. This game's English title changed from Grim Guardians to Gal Guardians just yesterday due to Intercreates getting legal complaints from the owners of the mobile game series Grim Guard, such as Grim Guard Tactics. Just remember that as you're watching this review is most of the time I refer to its old name of Grim Guardians. Also, it's currently not available on the digital storefronts anymore. It'll return pretty soon as soon as that name change is finished. Now, on to the review. Have you ever wondered what it would be like if the Galgun series was a 2D Castlevania game? No? Well, let's try anyways, because that's what this new game is. Into Creates decided to make a spin-off of Galgun featuring Shinobu and Maya, the demon hunters from Double Peace. So let's take a look at this game that's very much not like the rest of the series. Here is my review of Grim Guardians Demon Purge for the Nintendo Switch. This game takes place sometime after the events of Galgun Returns, Double Peace, and 2. There are references to each of those games in this one. As Shinobu and Maya go to school, they find it completely transformed into a demonic castle by the prankster demon in training, Corona. The two girls then venture through the castle to save their classmates and restore their school. I find this story pretty entertaining, though it's clearly made for fans of Galgun with Pretty much no context given on who everyone is, outside of a bit for the Protags and Corona. But if you're a fan, the references to the older games are really nice because they're everywhere. Cameos from pretty much the entire main cast of all those other games, along with special little items that you can grab like Double Piece's Pheromone Z. And speaking of all that lewd stuff, most of this game's story is pretty light on that. You'll have little references here and there, like going on a quest to get some panties or a school swimsuit. But until you get to the final boss at the very end of the game, it's pretty tame. Though, when you do get to that final boss, it gets a little crazy with a certain fetish that was kind of alluded to in Double Piece. But they go really hard with it here. One last thing I'll say about the story is voice acting both in Japanese and English. That's right, Maya Shinobu, the pro tag of Double Piece, and even Karuna have English voice actors now, though it's not really that much. The Japanese voices of this game are for the sound effects and gameplay as well as all cutscenes and dialogue, but the English voices are only for gameplay. None of the dialogue or story scenes have English dub voiceovers, which is a bit of a shame. When it comes to gameplay, Grim Guardians is a 2D side-scrolling action game. As you trek through it, you'll navigate side-scrolling levels, going through different paths, fighting enemies in real time, and taking down bosses to unlock the next stage. It is very much a Castlevania game, more geared towards the pre-Symphony of the Night stage-based games than the ones that came after. As such, main progression is pretty linear. Each stage has different paths that you can go through, but they're pretty much a straight line with a few variations that all end up in the same place where the boss is. Though how you navigate is the interesting part here. Grim Guardians is actually built to be a co-op game. You can have local co-op with two characters on screen at once, with one player controlling Shinobu and one controlling Maya. Or if you do a single player game, you can freely swap between them. That gives you a bit of strategy as they play differently. Shinobu is a much more tanky character that has a machine gun for ranged combat, while Maya has lower health and is a melee attacker that does way more damage with her combos than Shinobu's machine gun. The idea is different characters for different situations, like popping Maya in during a boss's cooldown to do a ton of damage and switching back to Shinobu if you're about to get hit so she can tank that shot. And I really like the system they made here. It's nice to have different characters act differently, they both get different types of sub-weapons, and there's a revive mechanic where when you're playing two-player, you can go and revive your ally, but if you're playing single-player, if you die, you just go back to a checkpoint, and you can go back and revive the other character and be fine. A feature that is extremely exploitable later on in the game with the boss fights. Get killed as Maya by a boss? Well, guess what? That boss doesn't regenerate all their health. So just run back in as Shinobu, revive Maya, and continue. As long as you do a decent amount of damage to that boss before you die again, you just whittle it down, constantly reviving over and over until they're dead. And yes, you can even use this on the veteran difficulty that has a life system versus casual. 
you only get a game over if you lose both your characters. So as long as you always revive, you can pretty much just keep going forever. But let's get back to the gameplay loop and all of the stuff they pulled from Castlevania. Aside from health, you have energy for sub weapons. You've got those classic door opening transitions going from room to room. A bunch of the enemies are clear references and mimicry of classic Castlevania enemies like the flying Medusa heads and axe throwing armor. And even the stage select you get once you unlock it has a huge Castlevania vibes. But that's not actually everything they pulled from. There's a bit of Mega Man thrown in here as well. Shinobu and Mai are kind of modeled after Mega Man X and Zero from the Mega Man X series. Shinobu has the ranged machine gun and the blue attire, while Maya has a triple slash and air slash that are really on the nose with Zero's moveset. And it goes even further with the special little shadow trail as you move around that looks remarkably similar to the same feature from Mega Man Zero's dash mechanic. Now when we get into the actual combat, it feels pretty good. Shinobu's bullets feel really nice, especially with her having a little bit of a handicap where she runs out of ammo and has to take a couple seconds to reload. And Maya having her slashes being so much stronger feels good and they have a lot of weight to them. The bosses are also pretty fun, both in gameplay and what each one is modeled after from the Gao Gun universe. It's not just random demon designs. A lot of them are modeled after actual characters from the Gao Gun series. The difficulty of them is also a bit more on par with Mega Man than Castlevania, with them being decently difficult at first, but once you learn their pattern, they're a cakewalk. That's a bit in on all the gameplay mechanics, so let's talk about progression. Remember in Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 where you actually go through the game multiple times? This game's like that. Your first trek through the stages is just the first half of the game. After that, you unlock a base of operations and can re-challenge the stages in any order you want, gaining access to secret areas you couldn't go before, along with getting some special upgrades for Maya and Shinobu's moveset, Maya getting a special charge attack for her melee, and Shinobu getting these missiles that shoot out with her bullets. Now, it does seem a bit repetitive to replay the whole game again, but we do get all those secret areas in each of the levels, so you're not going through all of the same places. And many of the bosses fight a little bit differently. They have the same attacks, but a lot of the effects and projectiles are mixed up and made to be a bit more frantic. Now let's go into content and length. This will be about an 8 to 10 hour trek, more if you want to complete the little side quest stuff in the base of operations, and unlock dialogue choices for getting the true ending versus the normal ending. I'd call that pretty okay for the $25 price tag. And next up is presentation. Visually, this was clearly meant to mimic the older PS1 and before Castlevania games, and it does that pretty well. There are a lot of pixels around, but it's clearly done that way on purpose. It does look nice in that style. And with performance, it's pretty good for 99% of the game. The frame rate's smooth, though one stage has a good bit of slowdown specifically in handheld mode, though it runs pretty well in docked. I didn't have any other issues, so let's go right into battery life. The original model gets 2 to 3 hours, the Lite gets 2.5 to 4, the V2 gets 7.5 to 9, and the OLED gets 8 to 10. In conclusion, Grim Guardians is a very strange game, being a Castlevania side-scrolling game that spun off from the lewd rail shooter Gal Gun. Though aside from a slowdown area and English voices that don't play for any part of the story, it's a pretty good little game with old school Castlevania and a bit of Mega Man X in it with co-op features that aren't exclusive to multiplayer. If you're a fan of Gal Gun and the Castlevania games, it's worth checking out. Reviews to go rates Grim Guardians Demon Purge for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.